CPU naming schemes have become a pretty complicated and massive web of numbers and letters that denote so many different things that I probably won't cover them all in this video. What I will cover is pretty much all of the information you'll need to know when picking your next CPU, whether that's an upgrade or a full new system. Now before we jump into that, if you aren't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So let's start off with AMD. They do a pretty good job of keeping what their naming schemes mean fairly consistent. They offer a series of CPUs called Ryzen and that is the sort of product family name. You can think of each Ryzen CPU as being fairly similar, sort of related, but not necessarily identical. That Ryzen name comes from their Zen architecture. The architecture is the way they design the CPU and the way that each CPU goes about actually doing each of the instructions that you're sending it. Most of those architectures are fairly similar and they're actually different versions of those architectures. Uh, so right now we're on Zen 2, which is the second generation revision, but we often see a half step in between generations. So we saw a Zen Plus and we're expecting to see a Zen 2 Plus later on this year. Looking specifically at the CPUs themselves, they're broken up into a set of categories. And like I said, AMD does a pretty good job of keeping what those categories mean fairly consistent with a few exceptions. Now, the categories are Ryzen 9, Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 3, and Athlons. With the higher end you go, the, the bigger the number, the, the better the CPU you'll be getting. Now, like I said, AMD does a good job of keeping what those categories mean fairly consistent. And so, generally speaking, the Ryzen 9 chips are for anything above 8 cores. So right now we have a 12 core and a 16 core. Ryzen 7 is for 8 core chips. Ryzen 5 is for 6 core. Ryzen 3 is for quad core. And the Athons are generally dual core. Now, like I said, there are some exceptions to that. One of those is the Ryzen 5 3400G, which is a quad core chip, but is denoted as a Ryzen 5. And some of their older mobile processors don't follow that scheme either. So what about the numbers then? Well, let's look at one of them, a Ryzen 5 3600. Now the three in the 3600 or the first number is the generation. So this is a third generation chip. The last three numbers are the model variants or the SKU number for that chip. With the higher that number is, the better the chip you're, you're generally getting. So a Ryzen 3900 is going to be a better chip than a 3700. There are a few extra things that they often add on the end, normally letters here. So with the 3600, there is actually two variants or two different distinct chips you can buy that are called a 3600. There's the standard 3600, and then there's the 3600X. That X denotes that it is a faster chip with what is essentially a factory overclock and the ability to uh, auto overclock itself while you're using it to a higher degree than normal. Now, the X actually stands for an AMD term, XFR or extended frequency range, which again, like I said, is effectively just a feature that lets the CPU auto overclock itself even better while you're using it. Now you can actually overclock manually the standard non-X variants, but they're often pre-tested to not necessarily reach the same sort of frequencies as the X variants, and so you can't always expect, even with a manual overclock, a 3600 to be able to perform the same as a 3600X. Now, there are a few other letters, one of which I've already mentioned, the G in 3400G. Now that means that it has a built-in graphics processor on that chip itself, which means that you technically don't need to go and buy a separate graphics card to use your system. Now, if you're gaming, it's still recommended you, go, you do go and get a decent graphics card, but it's technically not necessary. Feel free to look up benchmarks of those chips to see how well they perform. There are also some letters they use in their mobile chips, U meaning a low powered version, which runs at reduced clock speeds, 
and H, which is the relatively high performance version, which often requires more cooling and power delivery, but performs a little bit better, especially by comparison. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned is AMD's high-end desktop processor or HEDT lineup, Threadrippers. These are physically massive chips by comparison, kind of as you can see, and these currently go all the way up to 64 cores and have their own line of motherboards to support this physically massive chip, which don't work with the standard Ryzen CPUs. Now, this lineup currently only uh, includes three CPUs and has a fairly similar naming scheme to the standard desktop lineup with a the top end chip being the 3990X where the three denotes the generation, so third generation, nine denotes that it's a Threadripper chip, and then the second nine donates the model variant, so the nine is the 64 core, the seven is the 32 core, and the six is the 24 core. Right. I think that's enough for AMD, let's take a look at Intel. Now sadly Intel are a lot more fluid with their definitions and so I can't give you the same exact rundown and it's a bit more complicated but bear with me, I'll do my best to explain it in as simple terms as possible. Let's start with the desktop lineup. Now, they have a fairly similar scheme to AMD, and one of the terms you will regularly hear is the architecture name. So the current generation's architecture name is Coffee Lake Refresh. It's actually a refreshed version of the last generation chips, and that's a whole um, kind of uh, basically meme uh, on its own at this point. But essentially, you're looking at at a ninth generation CPU with a 10th generation set of CPUs aimed to be coming out fairly soon. Now those chips are broken up into similar categories. We have i9, i7, i5, i3, and then there are also a few other product families like Pentium and Celeron, although those don't necessarily follow the same naming schemes, but happily Intel does have a website called Intel Arc where you can look up all of that information for each of those CPUs all in one page, which makes it fairly easy to understand. And so I would recommend using that for specific CPUs if you're a little lost. Now looking at the model numbers for a chip like a 9700, it's actually very similar to AMD, where the nine is the generational number, so that is a ninth generation chip, and then the last three numbers are the model variants. So the higher the better, meaning a 9700 is generally a better chip than a 9600. Intel also uses letters at the end of their naming schemes to denote extra features or functionality, such as K, which is actually a very popular one. So a 9700 versus a 9700K. Now the K chip is normally factory overclocked above the standard variant anyway, but the K specifically means that it is an unlocked chip, which means you can manually overclock them pretty easily. Now you can technically overclock the non-K chips by changing their base frequency, but that's a lot more complicated and time consuming than just overclocking a standard K chip. So if you exclusively want to overclock, you should be looking at Intel K chips. Now there are a few other letters Intel uses, some of which are actually pretty new. One of them is F, which means that the CPU you're looking at doesn't have any integrated graphics and means that you will need to use a separate graphics card to make that system work. They also have S, which is a very new line and is named for special edition, but in the chips that currently have it, they are effectively factory overclock chips that actually boost themselves even higher than the standard variants and give a little bit more performance. There's also T, which is the low power version of the desktop chip. That's kind of uncommon to see. You only really find those in OEM systems like Dell or HP pre-built PCs. And then on the mobile side of things, the current generation only has a couple of uh, sort of suffixes. There's H, which stands for high performance graphics. And then there is HK, which stands for high performance graphics and is also unlocked. You can also find a couple of extra letters on some of Intel's other, often older product schemes, including U, which stands for ultra low power. And you can also find G, which is actually the same as AMD, means that it has integrated graphics on board. Intel also has their own line of HEDT, or high-end desktop processor CPUs. And this 
This is what they call their X or Extreme lineup. These currently go anywhere from 10 to 18 cores and again have their own socket and own motherboard lineup for those chips. Now, those chips again follow a very similar naming scheme to the standard desktop parts, except for the very top end part generally always gets an E added to the end to denote its sort of top end position in that product line. And one other thing to mention is their Xeon CPUs. These are generally their server CPUs, although they do have a product family called Xeon W or Xeon Workstation, which you might be interested in depending on your use case. These chips can go up to 28 cores right now and again have their own separate sockets. That's actually the same socket you'll find on most of their server motherboards. Now, these chips are uh, a little bit more complicated, although fairly similar naming scheme overall. In a chip like a Xeon W3245M, the first two numbers are the generation, and then the second two numbers are the model variant or the SKU of that CPU, with again, the higher the better. And then the M on the end is st stands for extended memory support. Now, I know that's a lot to take in, and I haven't covered necessarily everything here. These are only the current generation of CPUs, and there are, especially on the Intel side, quite a lot of different variants and especially as you go older the more complicated things get so if you have any specific questions feel free to leave them in the comments down below and either myself or the wonderful community that watches these videos will do our best to help you out. Now if you like this video do let me know in the comments down below this isn't a sort of video that I do all that often so if you're interested in seeing more like this please do let me know. I have a few ideas in mind including say motherboards explained so if you'd like to see that again let me know. If you want to see more videos like this one or plenty of other tech reviews or reviewing you know, these CPUs, then feel free to hit that subscribe button with the bell notification icon. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos, then feel free to take a look at the links in the description down below. There's quite a lot for you to choose from, including Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links that don't cost you anything to use, but massively help me out when you use them. There's Patreon if you want to get cool rewards like ad-free videos and support me directly, or merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool new designs. There's also a load of other stuff like Streamlabs OBS if you want to start streaming, and I'll do my best to remember to either on the end cards or in the cards of above leave the GPU names explained. So if you're just trying to understand the world of computers and especially gaming computers, then hopefully this plus the, the graphics card video will, uh, will get you a decent understanding. With that said, there are some other videos over there you can check out, and that is pretty much it. Um, yeah, we'll see you all in the next video.